Alright guys, um, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to talk about validation and verification. So this class uh, may be a little bit short, but it is a very important section. So I want to do it separately from the rest um, because it is frequently sh uh, shown on all the external exams. So, um, but it is also a very easy section once you actually understand it. So let's just dive right in. And uh, first, we're going to take a look at validations. Now, before we talk about it and the types of validations, first we need to know what is it even used for and what it is. So validations are used to check that the data entered into a computer program can be used by the system. So kind of a wordy definition. I don't really like it. So what it, um, to explain it simply, so uh, we have computer programs, and each computer program can only accept a certain type of data, a certain range of data. For example, if a computer program requires you to enter your age, if you enter your name into it, it cannot work because it only accepts your age, right? But how does it, the computer program know that you have entered your age, not your name or anything else? It uses a type of thing called validation checks. And it uses these validation checks to check that the data you've entered into the program is in fact the type of data that the program needs. And in this case, it checks that the, the um, data you've entered into the program is an age, is your age, not anything else. So with that out of the way, let's look at the types of validation checks. In total, there are six validation checks and they are used together in order to um, check the data you have entered into the program. The first is range check. Um, and what this check is used is that it checks the data you have entered into the program is within an acceptable range. Now, what does that mean? Let's take a look at an example. For example, if I, ha I, I have a calculator that can only calculate numbers ranging from one, zero to 100. It's a very weak calculator. It can only calculate numbers in the range of 0 to 100. For this calculator, if we perform a range check, we will check that the numbers entered into the calculator is only within this range. So that, for example, if I enter minus 20 using a range check, we know that minus 20 does not fall into the range of 0 to 100. So we will... Um, get rid of this data and show that it is incorrect. Or for example, if we enter the number of 120, we also know that it isn't in the range, so it will not work. So we use a range check to check that the data you've entered into a computer program falls within the range that it accepts. Okay, next, let's take a look at a lens check. And lens checks are used to check that the lens of data entered is within acceptable range. Now, lens checks are uh, used for words or sentences. So, for example, if I have a, uh, or strings in general. So, if you have a string, for example, uh, something requires your name, entering of your name, but it only limits your name to be less than 10 characters or 10 letters or length of less than 10, then you can use a lens check. For example, uh, if the program only requires names of less than 10, uh, lens of 10, then you can use a lens check to check that the data entered or your names that are entered into the program does indeed have a le lens of less than 10. All right, next, let's take a look at type check. This um, validation check is used to check that the type of data entered is the correct type. So, um, we know that there are lots of types of data. For example, we have integers, we have uh, floats, we have strings, lots of types of data. This type of check checks that the type of data entered is correct. Uh, let's go back to the example at the beginning. If a computer program requires you to enter your age, an age must be an integer, right? So if you enter a name, that will be, for example, I'm entering my name is Neo. Then using a type check, we know that Neo is a type of string. 
not an integer. Therefore, we know that Neo will not work for the program. So, for, or, or for example, we enter a float, a decimal. If we enter 10.1, for example, because we know that age is integer and we use a type check, we know that 10.1 is not an integer. So therefore, will not work for this program. So that is type check. It checks that the type of data entered is correct. Next, let's look at this very, very, very simple one, and that is presence check. It is very, very, very simple. And basically, all it does is that it checks that data has been entered into the program. So that's it. For example, if the program requires age, you enter anything into the program that you don't just leave it blank and not do not enter any data into it. So it checks that um, some data is entered into the program and not left blank. The fifth one is a format check. And um, what this does is that it checks that the data entered follows a certain format that you intend or the program intends. Let's say dates, for example. You see the entry of dates on lots of websites, lots of programs. Um, very often you will say, see that they require you to enter dates in some sort of, um, the, maybe for example, this type of format. First you enter the date, next you enter the month, and finally you enter the year. This is actually a type of format that you need. So you need to enter your dates in this type of format. In order to check that you have entered your date specifically in this format, we can use a format check to check that you have actually used the this format. All right, now let's take a look at the final um, validation check, and that is the check digit. Now, uh, this validation check is a little bit different than the prior validation checks. It is a very weird one as well. It's not the most important. This is one of the least important validation checks. So um, just have an idea of what is going on. You don't need to fully understand it. It isn't that important. Just have an idea that this, uh, this kind of thing appears and exists, okay? So um, what this check digit does, it, it detects whether the data entered has any errors. And the way in which the, this check digit where method detects the data entered has any errors is by adding an extra digit at the end of the data. For example, the correct data that entered, for example, is 1024. The check digit, what it does is that it adds an extra digit at the end. And the way in which this digit is added. So what this digit is, it is used by some sort of algorithm or calculation on the data uh, in order to create this digit. So here we use the data, which is 1024, to calculate the final check digit. And this final digit is actually just called the check digit. So the this could be any sort of algorithm. There are lots of ways to create this last digit. An easy way might be just to add all the units together. For example, add one and zero and two and four together. So therefore we will get the check digit of seven. And then after we enter this data into the, uh, into the program, we'll see that if the correct data also has a check digit of seven. So we compare the two check digits to see if it matches. If it does not match, then we can know that the data entered has some sort of um, error. So just remember that the check digit is an extra digit added to the end of a number calculated using units from the number in order to check whether the data has any mistakes. So you use the last extra data digit to check whether the data has any mistakes. All right, that is the check digit. Now that we are done with validations, all six validations. Let's take a look at verifications. Verifications are a lot easier, and there are also a lot fewer uh, examples. So verifications are used to check that the data entered into the program is the same as the original. Um, it's a bit hard to understand by reading the definition, um, but 
if you think about an example, for example, I have, you know, I have、um, a piece of paper, and on there I have, you know, my password, and I need to enter、um, my password that is written on paper onto, for example, a computer in order to log in. How do I make sure that the password I have entered into the computer is the same as the password that is written on the paper? How do I know that I have haven't mistaken, you know, a a a letter? How do I know that I have not, you know, messed something up? Or for example, I have a spreadsheet on paper, have lots of data in it, and I need to copy the data from the spreadsheet onto Excel on the computer. How do I make sure? That the data on the spreadsheet on paper is the same as the data on the computer. There are two ways that we can、uh, use. The first, visual check. You can you just use your eyes. It's a very very weird check, but it is actually true. Visual checks. You just use your eyes. You see that you use your eyes to see that the data you have entered onto your computer is the same as the data on the spreadsheet. Simple, straightforward, nice. The second one is the double entry check, and what this check does is that it requires for you to enter your data into the、um, program or computer twice, and it compares whether the data you have entered in those two times is the same data. If it is not the same, it will know that there is some type of error, so you need to re-enter.、Um, An example of the double entry check is the password creation. On lots of websites and programs, when you create a new password, it will require for you to enter your password twice. By doing so, and、uh, once by doing so, and it 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 eliminates lots of incorrect or、uh, or random mistakes. For example, if you slip and and you know type a wrong password,、um, by Typing your password again twice, making sure that these two passwords match, it is highly likely that your two passwords are as intended. So these are the two types of、uh, verifications: visual check, which uses your eyes, and double entry check, which uses、um, by by typing data twice into the program. All right, so that's it for today for validation and verification.、Um, please remember to like and subscribe. And、um, see you next time.